Dominican Republic for round one of the 2008 Petexan Archery World Cup. In strict keeping with archery's penchant for the exotic, 2008 begins with a visit to the capital of the New World, Santo Domingo, and its oldest fort, Fortaleza Ozama. More than 320 archers from 39 countries registered for this event, many of them with two goals, earn points to qualify for the World Cup final and prepare for the Olympic Games. As 2007 World Cup winner Baljinam Tsarempolov starts his campaign for an Olympic gold medal, India's Dola Banerjee needs to confirm status. Jorge Jimenez is on the defensive, and with Petra Eriksson away, the compound women will play. Stars are shining. Olympic dreams igniting performances in this, the third year of the World Cup. 2008 promising to be a defining moment in the history of the sport. In the ladies' compound bronze final, Alvina Lojinova faced Amandine Buyo. Both archers had fought their respective ways through to the semi-finals and both suffered significant defeats. However, with no shortage of drama, Amandine and Albina pushed for a tie-break after both archers stalled at 1.12 after the first 12 arrows. By the close of end one, Amandine led 29-27, end two, and Amandine failed to extend her lead further with 56-54. However, in the third, Albina retaliated, closing the score to 84-83 after Amandine shot an eight with her first arrow of the end. End four gave Albina the chance to level the proceedings, shooting 29 to Amandine's 28, leveling the score. In the tiebreak, Amandine failed to impress, shooting an eight, allowing Albina to take the bronze with a nine. The tiebreak did not do justice to the quality of archery from Amandine, however, Albina equally deserved a win. Liam Grimwood of Great Britain shot superbly against Dave Cousins before conceding a respectful defeat at the hands of experience and determination, 114 to 116. It then fell to Liam to fight for the bronze medal. Standing in his way, however, was Australian Peter Kuflin. Peter took the early lead in the first with a one-point margin over Liam. After shooting two perfect arrows, Peter extended his lead further in the second, 55-51. For all of Liam's hard work, he was unable to close the gap. Despite shooting a 10 in the fourth, it would be his only second 10 of the match. Not enough against Peter, who held it together in the windy conditions. The Olympics is on the minds of those without pulleys, and none more so than the European archers looking to fight their way past the Koreans. Berenger Shu and Lisa Unru both fell in the semis after quite superb shooting in qualification. Shu had sailed past Wei from Chinese Taipei but would not enjoy the same experience shooting against Natalia Erdineva. There was only one point in it but that would be just enough to see Natalia go through to face Valeva in the final and put Shu into bronze medal position. End one was a dead heat with little to choose between the two Euro archers, 24 apiece. In the second, both archers shot sevens that highlighted the windy conditions rather than anything else. The third belonged to Beringer as she closed the door on Lisa who failed to match Beringer's nine, 73-69. As the last arrow left her bow, Shu confirmed a 10 point margin over Lisa, 101 versus 91, Shu takes the bronze. In men's recurve, something was definitely wrong. Balmina Zyrempilov had lost in the semis to Ilario Di Buo, 107-108, which was of course good news for Ilario. This meant, however, that Zyrempilov would now be fighting for a bronze medal rather than simply walking away with the gold. His component, Rai, has been consistent in his inconsistency throughout his career. After coming fourth in the Commonwealth Archery Championships in India, Rai then finished 44th in Olsan in the World Cup, only a few months later. 2004 gave Rai a first place, however, in the Asian Grand Prix. India's Tarandeep Rai put up a good fight, but it would not be enough to put a dent in the Russians' shooting. 99 to 110, Zyrempilov took bronze. Now joining the ladies' compound match, the final between Jamie Van Natta, the just-turned 30-year-old from Toledo, Ohio. Jamie has been on a roll the last couple of years and has set a new world record that currently stands for the FIDA full round. Meanwhile, her opponent, Ivana Budin, a top university shooter, 
Not as highly accomplished as Jamie, but has been steadily increasing her position at international competitions for the last couple of years. Windy conditions on the field of play, bright sunshine, but the big problem is the wind. You just saw Ivana shoot a six, and the reason had everything to do with the fact that we're close to the ocean front, and the winds are not just unpredictable, they're strong at times. Ivana shoots and scores what looks like a liner, possibly a nine. Jamie shoots a solid nine. Jamie has a definite advantage in these sorts of conditions. The reason? She shoots almost the maximum feet of poundage. She shoots as much poundage, as much bow weight, as many of the men, around 59 pounds. This gives her an advantage over more slightly built opponents and also gives her more arrow velocity. What that means is that the arrow gets there sooner and is affected by the wind less. You saw a whole lot of body English on that shot from Ivana and it paid off with a nine. You can see the wind pushing Jamie around. Just sheer determination showing in her face, but still pulling a seven on that shot. At the moment of the release, the archers pretty well know where that arrow is going to go. The tough part is dealing with the fact that, oh no, it's in the seven ring. There's a nine from Jamie. And again, you can see the effect of the wind. You can also see the fact that the wind is shifting while the archer is trying to aim. This means that the archer has to continually update their aim point. Paid off for Ivana on that shot. That was Ivana's final arrow, and just two points is enough to win. Jamie Van Natta settling the deal with a perfect shot, 10 points. And Jamie Van Natta scoring this first World Cup event. So not the highest scores, but uh, still pretty good for the circumstance. Now the same situation existing for the men's division where Robert Timms and this man, Dave Cousins, are about to face off. Dave Cousins sort of the archery bad boy these days. There's a story behind that, but it's probably best for us not to relate it. Robert Timms does not have a long competitive resume. He shot at the World Outdoor Championships where he finished ninth last year. And his other experiences have been uh, the World Archery Cup in Ulsan, Korea last year. In spite of that uh, short competitive resume, here he is at the gold medal final facing perhaps the number one compound shooter in the world, Dave Cousins. Dave leading right off from the start, 10 points. And you can see that uh, big shrug from Dave Cousins when he was asked by one of his teammates, where did you aim for that one? Nine points on that shot. Robert Timms with a pretty good group to start off as we get into the second end. And Dave right now is in the solid position. Got a three-point lead. And as this continued, we got it down to a one-point lead. Because of the wind conditions, it's just very uh, unpredictable, as it were. Watch the flags behind Robert. You can see that they died down, they speed up, they switch direction. Solid shot from Dave Cousins for a nine. Normally, the compound archers at this level are going for the ten ring, but in these circumstances, with this much wind and this much unpredictability, they're pretty happy to hit gold. Final arrow of the match. Eight points means that Dave is going to have to shoot that last arrow, and he's going to have to shoot at least an eight to win the match. Boom, Dave Cousins taking that 10 for the victory, the first outdoor victory of the season, but not Dave's first victory of the year. Having won Las Vegas, Dave is on a roll for 2008. And that wraps up the gold medal round. Great performance from Robert Timms as well with his first outing for the year. Our hero is Mr. Jung Jae Hun. Do you know? He is 1992 Barcelona silver medalist individual. And he's my hero when I start archer. My father is a coach of um, uh, school Colin Shevse. My father is the archery coach in Korea. All uh, sports has the same dream, I think, to go to Olympics.
but uh, I didn't expect that it would be so soon for me. I want to try Olympic and international game, but if I stay in Korea, I can't do any, anything. So I never into the Korean national team. So I started uh, to uh, shoot in school. I moved to the Australia 2005. Good coach, good system. My friend and my parents says, oh, Sky, you have good choice to move to Australia. Everybody said to me. To go to Olympics, um, I had to shoot well at the uh, Russian Championship, which will be in June. Sports is sports. I don't think anything. Just keep shooting. I like match play, one by one playing, like Olympic. I can say that uh, I uh, will go to Olympics because everything can change. I think myself, oh, Sky, good, good, good. <laughs> good choice, good choice, yeah. Here it is, the archery dream match of the World Cup between the world champion Natalia Voleva and the World Cup champion Natalia Erdanieva. It does not get better than this. These are the two top recurve women in the world right now, at least outside of Korea, and arguably even including the Koreans because Natalia Voleva won the world championships. This girl, Natalia Erdanieva, the niece of Baljina Tsarempolov, made her mark at the World Cup over this past year. She's only 20 years old. Big contrast from Natalia Voleva, who has a lot more experience and is considerably older. Natalia Erdanieva knocking off a who's who list of top shooters to get to this point. This is the woman with the fear factor working for her. She always has the same game face when she is about to take out a, an opponent, and we've seen it before. We've seen it at the European Indoor Championship earlier this year. We saw it in Leipzig last year at the FIFA World Championships. And she just absolutely ran over the opposition to get to this gold medal final. Natalia Voleva, the legendary archer who's represented the Soviet Union, represented the CIS, represented Moldova, and finally represented Italy. But she opens with a seven in the gusty, windy conditions. No better than that was Natalia Erdanieva on the first air. However, boom, 10 points for the first makeup arrow of this end, you might say. Natalia Voleva certainly getting the gauge immediately. Look at that wind flag behind her. You can see it's pushing not just her, but the arrows as they fly through the air. Natalia Erdanieva grouping well for the last two shots. But right off the bat, you've got a two-point advantage for Natalia Voleva. You don't want to lose two points to Natalia Voleva anytime, and when you've only got nine arrows to go, it's a tough one to overcome. Natalia Erdanieva has been here before. She's certainly been behind and come from behind and won before. We've also seen Natalia Voleva toss out some arrows that uh, were less than fortunate in some of these circumstances. But for the last two years, Voleva has just been back to her old form, her early 1990s form when she was dominating everything, winning the world championships in 1995, and then winning the world championships again in Leipzig last year Natalia Voleva possibly, arguably, shooting as well as she ever has. The Italian team discussing the situation right now. They've been helping advise her on wind and strategy all week. And that is a nine for Erdanieva. Voleva following up with her own nine. It's on the line and it's in. Erdanieva shoots and scores a nine. One thing you'll notice about Voleva, the shot is fast and it's always the same timing. That is how she delivers herself tens. Natalia Erdanieva's shots, well, you can see she kind of looked like she felt like she got lucky on that one. Voleva will shoot within about two and a half seconds from hitting anchor almost every time, and pretty much no matter what the circumstances are. That consistency gives her a lot of strength under pressure. You know, I dare say Natalia Erdanieva looking a little less composed than I've often seen her. Especially after that last shot, you notice that she just seemed to be surprised, perhaps uh, a little bit dazzled by the wind conditions, which are quite honestly quite tough here. Natalia Voleva with a one-point advantage, six arrows to go, and she shoots an 
Eight, that's Natalia Erdonieva. Here comes Natalia Boleva. Boom, just out of the ten. Erdonieva. Nine. That is a six out the top. Seven. There is Natalia Erdonieva's third arrow. That is a seven. Nine. And there's a nine. What we didn't see before was that Natalia Valeva did shoot one of those shots I mentioned earlier, an uncharacteristic six. You don't see that from Valeva too often. And here we go. It's the final three arrows of this match. Wind is not letting up. You can see the wind flags being pushed around behind the archers. Essentially, this fort is built on a mesa that overlooks the ocean, so obviously you're going to get the influence of ocean breezes. Erdoneva shooting first, and that's a nine. Whenever the archer trails, they shoot first to begin and end. Look at Voleva's fast shot, and look at the result. Ten points. Erdoneva with an eight. Again, purely a wind issue as far as I can see. And Voleva another ten. One arrow to go, a five-point advantage for Voleva, Erdoneva with a ten to put a little extra pressure on Natalia. Six will win, and it's a nine. Natalia Voleva, once again dominating, finally cracking that game face with her trademark big smile after a win. No shame for Natalia Erdoneva in these circumstances, but Natalia Voleva has been dominant all week long. She has just been unstoppable, and that steamroller from Italy has just rolled over another opponent fighting through the wind with great form and great poise under pressure. Natalia Voleva shows why she's a world champion. You can't expect Natalia Erdoneva to be happy about this, but she's got a bright future ahead as okay. the season continues. <laughs> I came here first on holidays. I really felt the spirit of partying here. I participated in the competition and it was difficult. At the midday of the competition, it was like the midday of my holiday. I really enjoyed the competition because I rested a little. I will go to Porridge because it is close to where I live. I want to participate in the competition. I love doing competition. For me, it's like a holiday, so it is important for me to enjoy the event. Then when I get back home with the family, this is where the work begins. Well, this uh, is a battle of experience versus youth in the men's recurve division. It is Kuo Changwa of Chinese Taipei versus Ilario Di Buo, the owl, as they call him. Ilario, one of the older shooters on the circuit. Mr. Kuo, one of the younger shooters on the circuit. And Ilario Di Buo has an impressive resume. He is World Indoor Champion from 2003, team silver medalist at the World Indoor Championships in 1999. You'll notice that he's got a uh, strong competitive resume indoors, a less strong one outdoors, but he's got lots of experience in the Olympic Games. Now, Mr. Kuo was a top university shooter, and he's only just gotten onto the main circuit. He finished 13th at the Asian Championships and 15th at the Beijing Test Event. But he got through some very good shooters, including the indoor champion and the world field champion. Now, Larry Debo at 43 is getting to be just a little on the old side for a recurve shooter. But you wouldn't know it looking at his boyish uh, smile there. He got through a number of people, including the number one man in the world, Valjinima Tsarempolov, the one-point clincher. Wind conditions just as tricky for the recurve men as they've been for some of the other competitors, with uh, Dibuo opening with a nine. Mr. Kuo opening with a nine as well. Eleven arrows to go. Ilario Dubuo with a ten. Solid shooter, Ilario Dubuo. He's got a push for him, and that's a nine for Mr. Kuo. When we refer to a push form, what we're talking about is a situation where the archer is actually pushing a little more than they're pulling, more static on the back half. And that can work well in windy conditions. However, you saw that second arrow from Ilario was a six, and you don't want one of those when you're shooting against a young upstart like Kuo. 
However, Lario has been in this position before. He's a point behind right now. They're looking at the wind. They're understanding the situation perhaps a little better. I think Ilario has decided he's just going to go for it. Try to shoot a strong shot in the wind, which is always good advice. Beautiful day, really. I mean, the sunshine is shining, the wind is a nice, cool breeze, but it makes it tough when you're shooting archery. Wouldn't know it from that, though. How about that for a dead center X-10? Nine points, and now we're looking at uh, something closer to a tie, as Lario Dubuo has got his timing down, he shoots another 10. And good grouping, but not in the middle. And that is a good group, 10-10-9. And so it's a one-point difference, officially. After official scoring, we're looking at a tied score. Halfway mark. So 54 points for each competitor out of a possible 60, a good strong opening end, particularly considering the weather conditions. Larry Dubuo shooting first as we revert to the original scoring order, and that's a solid 10. And his opponent now gives up two points. Ilario Dubuo jumping into a two-point lead in a single shot. And another 10. Not gonna give up that advantage, are we? Nine just out, maybe two millimeters out. Dubuo is relentless. Quo gives up more points. Not a good position to be in with three arrows to go right now. Ilario Dubuo, on the other hand, is in a great position. That shows the effectiveness of shooting good, strong, determined shots. When you shoot three good arrows and your opponent has got to try to make up points, it puts a lot of extra pressure on them. Final three shots of the match are going to be very critical. A lot can change in these windy conditions. One bad arrow can reverse what looked like a sure thing. So both shooters are going to feel a lot of pressure as these last three ends of arrows get underway. Now here's Quo, who trails and now has to shoot first. There's an eight from him. Dibuo looking pretty nine solid. And with that nine, Ilario Dibuo maintaining his lead, increasing it. In fact, there is a nine from Mr. Quo. Can't catch a break. He's two millimeters out of that ten ring again. There's Dibuo with a nine. Dubuo shooting solid shot, nine points. Just doesn't quite have the edge that Dubuo is enjoying. And Ilario Dubuo puts this one to bed with four extra points to play with. Ilario Dubuo, a happy man right now. He really has had some ups and downs in his career, but he's definitely been on the upswing for the last couple of years. And as the Olympics loom large for the Italian archers, we expect we'll see more of Ilario Dubuo in the days ahead. This gentleman also with a bright future. A lot of observers are looking at the Chinese Taipei team and saying, hey, watch out for these guys in Beijing. And from what we've seen this week, that's absolutely true. Could be that we'll see some great performances from both Italy and Chinese Taipei at the Olympic Games later this year. I suffered a little with the wind here, but finally I was a little more lucky. I started the training a little bit later this year. I started in January. So I hope that I can have a good Olympics. Here I had a real problem with the weather. We had so much rain and so much wind. I was expecting completely different weather here. Anyway, I am really happy because I succeeded with my experience to make all of these negative points not so important.
So that's all. The first round divided squarely between the American and Italian teams. The performance from Natalia Voleva and Ilario Dubu giving those looking for an easy ride to the Olympics something to think about. In compound, Jamie Van Natta cruising through the wind, rain, and heat to produce a textbook performance. But the weekend really belonged to this guy, Dave Cousins, who after a year away from the World Cup circuit returned to break a world record and win two gold medals. Most archers will struggle to do that in a career. Cousins did it in one weekend of shooting. Join us for round two in Porish, Croatia, and enjoy extended highlights and interviews on archery.tv. Thanks for watching, and good shooting.